Ho 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 ho! Welcome to a challenge log made by Red Cat Imaging. It's inside this little container here. Yeah. So let's open it up, look inside and if possible, pick it. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, welcome to the challenge lock that Tom made for me. So Tom, thank you so much for making this wonderful lock for me. By the way, he goes uh, at, under Red Cat Imaging on YouTube, so don't miss to check him out. Yeah, that's the that's the lock. You can see the, the set screws here. It's an Abus 64 Ti50, very lightweight. Um, and here you can see um, his logo, the T engraved. Very, very nice. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful themed keys. Lock works absolutely wonderful, no problem at all. The bidding is quite good, so ups and downs next to each other, very good. Last pin is a, a short key pin, that's a very good bidding. Um, keyboard is not too restricted. Um, and I did pick it before a couple of times with different um, experiences. Um, most of the time it opens after a count rotation and probably a T-pin, but sometimes it does really weird things. So sometimes it drops into an extremely deep fall set and I thought I already have it open, but um, no, it's a very deep fall set and it's very hard to recover from that. So let's give it a try and see what it does now on camera. I'm very curious to see what he put inside. Maybe uh, some very heavy um, plug modifications. I don't know. So apply tension here. And I think three is the first binder. And by the way, the keyway is so, um, so wide open that I can use a very thick uh, Peterson uh, DeForest diamond. So that's very comfortable to pick. I'll a little bit more from three, I believe, and counter rotation, and the core already turned into a little deep false, a little false set, not a deep one, a little false set. Hopefully, you will see the deep false set on this lock. If not, I will make an extra picking and show it to you at the end of this video. And now, you've probably seen that it turned into a bit deeper false set, and yeah, now pin one is binding. So let's see if this gives us, yeah, so pin 1 was a spool, so I could set it, so now let's see if we can find the last pin and the lock opened. Yeah, that's what it does most of the time, but as I said, sometimes it drops into a really, really deep fall set and I will make some pickings uh, later on uh, to show you that deep fall set. But now I'm curious to see what's inside. I will lock it back up and yeah, I will gut it. So to, to, to gut it, I have to remove the, the screws, of course. And now let's see what's inside number one. I believe we will see a, oh, <laughs> that's unexpected. That's totally unexpected. So that's not the usual spool I was expecting to see. That is something Okay, that's the key pin, uh, spooled key pin, an overset trap, but that's not the spool I expected to see. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's two Bulberians connected. Are they magnetic? Yes, they, no, they aren't. Huh? What's that? <laughs> so they are. They are connected with a wire. Oops. That's very interesting. Never seen that before. It just looks like um, a Bulberian chain that you have um, um, yeah, of the part that you that you use to um, um, yeah, at a sink to, to prevent the water from, from uh, floating uh, down. Uh, no, no better explanation. I don't know what 
uh, what the English uh, name is, but they have usually have a, a, um, a little chain on that on that piece, and that just looks like a part of the chain. Very very interesting. So let's continue. Ah yes, of course, and it um, behaves like a, a spool, of course. Uh, yeah, very cool. So let's see what's inside number two. So from what I felt, I would say nothing special. But maybe I'm wrong. Oh, there is something special. Oh, that's a pin and pin. Wow, and here we've got a very interesting looking key pin. Spool key pin with a, a serrated part towards the shear line. Very nice. And here we've got something very interesting. We've got a pin and pin. Wow, that's a great work. I put it in the tray and we will look at it later on in detail. So, wow, that's a great lock. You, Tom must have put a lot of work into that. And here we've got, oops, you can't see that, sorry. Here we've got a spooled key pin with a taper and That's awesome. That's a um, that's a pin with a with a floating wafer in the middle. Wow, Tom, that's a fantastic lock. Awesome. Let's continue. And I will uh, pull out the plug later on. See if there are any modifications. So what? Oh, I can't see that. So what do we have here? We've got a serrated key pin and a upside down key pin with serrations and a, a spoolish part. And now the last. All right. Here we've got a very, very interesting driver. Multiple serrations and mostly spoolish. And here is the standard key pin. So let's look at the pins really close in detail. So for the for the key pins, we have a spoolish key pin. We have a spoolish key pin with, a, with some serrations. Uh, here we have a spool and a, a tapered uh, key pin, like a key pin t pin, and four, four is uh, serrated towards the shield line and five is a standard. So now to the amazing drivers, we have a double Burberian driver connected with a wire. <laughs> then we have a um, multi-part driver in two. Very nice work with a serration here on the hollow part. Then we have that's not a it's not a pin and pin. How did he do that? That's awesome. With a that's a that's one with a with a floating wafer in the middle. Just like the Dom S driver pins, but I would say that this should come apart, but it does not. So really don't know. Maybe that's press fit inside um, the lower part here, but that's that's an awesome, awesome work. Sometimes it dropped into a very deep fall set and I could set this spool, but it didn't open. Maybe um, it then hang on, um, on this part here. Wow, great. So then we have um, a uh, serrated with a spoolish part and finally a, well, uh, spool with some serrations. Awesome work on the pins. Wow, that's a fantastic lock. <laughs> so, now let's check the plug. So I have to remove the last set screw. And another spring comes out. So we have two springs in here holding the retaining pin. 
No retaining pin, but there should be a retaining pin. But now the plug should come out. Yeah. Here is the retaining pin, it's just another key pin that he used for that. Now I should be able to pull out the plug. Yes, here we go. And no modifications. Haha. <laughs> so we've got a standard plug. Nothing modified here, no serrations, no threading. It's a little bit flattened, that makes picking just a bit easier because it widens the shear line. Very nice plug, standard. <laughs> All right, here we can look inside the lock. These are the two locking poles that are um, now um, pushed by the springs towards the cutouts on the shackle. And if you turn the plug, here we have the um, actuator this little uh, piece here at the end of the plug and if you turn it you push the locking poles against the spring tension and the lock will open. Yeah, so again Tom thank you very much for all this, all your efforts in making this fantastic lock. It was a great fun for me to pick and it was very surprising to see what's inside. Yeah, now I will uh, get it back together and uh, show you a picking of it where it drops into this extremely deep fall set. All right, see you next time. Thanks for watching, happy picking and bye-bye. Ho, 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 well done, bye-bye. All right, let me try to get into this very deep fall set that this lock can show. Um, I have marked the neutral position of the plug so that we can appreciate the amount uh, the plug can turn. So let's see. Okay, here we go. So that's the false set I was talking about. Isn't that enormous? <laughs> so let's see if we can release it from that false set. So pin 1 doesn't really want to go up. Um, I have to let the plug return by itself and still no feedback yet from 1. So now, now I get feedback and okay 1 is set but no opening and now it opens. So, that's the cool fall set that this lock can show because of the Barbarian. <gasps> Alright, cheers and bye-bye. Bye-bye.